What's up again, everybody? We are officially at the end of the national championship season, and now it's time to set our sights on Worlds. But before we get that far, let's talk through the last week of the national championship season. Let's put a bow on it. Let's discuss the wins and the top eights across the board, including, of course, the US, but also all of the other events, and try to take some stock of where this meta is. Spoiler alert, I think this meta is perhaps the best that we've ever been. Well, I won't even say perhaps. I think it is the best that we've ever been in. And so let's break down what we saw over this past weekend. Thank you, by the way. If I got to meet you at the US National Championships, it was an absolute pleasure to meet all of you. Um, it, was, it was truly something else. That was a fun time. I had a blast. I am still trying to recover sleep from said event. So I apologize that this video is so late in the week, but hopefully you get something out of it and enjoy the experience of uh, walking through and seeing all these top eights. So starting with Belgium, Belgium was picked up by Briar, Warden of Thorns. And very interestingly enough, Briar, and I should start everything off by saying this, if we go to Heroes and Living Legends, Briar is actually sitting under 80 points away from rotating, which is super interesting because gaining 80 points from this event, from this, I should say, week of events, puts you very close to actually reaching Living Legend status, but not close enough to rotating out. Now, if if Briar would have rotated out via, you know, all the points, gaining, you know, more wins and things like that, then uh, both Briar, of course, obviously being gone, but also Viscerai would no longer have access to Rosetta Thorn as a very powerful weapon, and that would be a huge nerf, which is, uh, I guess, in a lot of ways, welcome to, uh, you know, Rune Blades in general. But that would be a huge change to the meta. Another huge change. Would it be as big as Prism? No, not even, not even close. Because I think the meta has evolved perhaps past just Rune Blade dominance. Uh, but it is important to note that uh, Briar still real good because Briar shows up in a lot of these top eights, as you'll see here in a moment. But picking up the win here, gaining some points. We also have Oldham, Oldham, and uh, Viscerai. And then we have uh, one of the first Dromai's we're gonna talk about. Dromai made its way into a, a variety of top eights, but didn't really cut into some of these bigger ones. And I wanna point that out because it is very interesting. And I'll talk about it here in a little bit um, as we you know look at a couple of other Dromai results. Lexi also made the cut. By the way, this is an almost 60 person classic constructed event, which is pretty cool. Um, Dash in here as well. And then Phi made a huge resurgence this week and the previous week back into the meta, um, into the uh, forefront, I'll even say, of the meta is Phi overall. Now, Denmark was a 48 person classic constructed event and uh, we had some really interesting results from here. Oldham wins it. Uh, so congratulations to the Oldham player. Phi and Phi both also sit two and three. Again, Phi took my, like completely by surprise, took me by surprise completely. I was shocked um, at how much Phi charged forward over the past two weeks. And I think there were a lot of people that were because uh, specific decks that you may take to an event that have really good matchups into something like Oldham, uh, all of a sudden just really don't have good matchups into Fi, and that is a feast or famine type deck that I am cool to get behind. Briar uh, again cuts into the top eight here after an Oldham on the fourth place uh, finish or third, fourth finish. Another Fi, so three different Fi's in this smaller tournament. Uh, Lexi again, believe it or not, cuts in as well. I think some of these Lexis are starting to pivot to the uh, hard ice control little decks, and I like that personally. I think it's really cool. And then uh, I don't know if that's actually the case for this specific deck, but I've seen a couple people pivot to that. And then Kano actually makes the uh, cut in. I feel like if you're in a smaller area as far as like um, tournament uh, turnout, if you know how to play Kano very well, man, can you just like go for it, hit the top eights. I think you should definitely do that. Learn how to play Kano well, and then just uh, hit some top eights in some of these uh, smaller events because uh, it's pretty good. Here in Greece at a 44 person classic constructed event, Icelander picks up another win. I'm not gonna lie, I was down on Icelander going into this week, 
and uh, I was proven wrong in a very big way because Icelander is uh, real good if you know how to play her. She is very complex. She's very complicated, but she can put up results as we saw both here and in several other instances. Oldham still very good. Levia shows up. Levia, Levia, does, it doesn't really matter how you say it, just understand you need to put a little bit of respect there because it did finish in the top four here, and Viserai as well. Another Phi, another Icelander down here, Oldham, and then the uh, rare Dorinthia sighting. Dorinthia kind of fell off uh, uh, in a couple of these results from the week one results that I feel like she had. She was a little bit more prevalent there. Um, this is going to be one of the times we talk about uh, Dromai because Dromai shows up again surrounded by a bevy of other Oldhams. This is at the Hong Kong Regionals as a 55 person event. And uh, it's kind of interesting because Oldham is one of those theoretical good matchups for Dromai. And uh, the better you have your deck tuned to it and the better that you can execute in that matchup, the more sure it feels, I'll put it that way. Um, but I, I'm not gonna say that it's like a guarantee like 90-10 matchup, I don't think it is. Because I do think you have to execute, and uh, I do think you have to pitch stack well, and I do think the Oldham player has agency in that matchup. But it exists and is good in uh, you know a meta like this. But Briar and Briar can just get there on you, and Dash showing up as well, cutting into the top two, which is really cool, and Icelander in the back as well. So you start to see some of these names cycle around, and that really kind of points you in the right direction for where. All of these heroes are falling as far as like a tier list would be concerned, as far as results would go. And then in Indonesia, we had a uh, 36 person kind of a smaller event, classic constructed, but the national champion was crowned. Viserai picks up the win. And then here's another Dromai instance. Dromai almost taking out one of these events. Even though it's a smaller 36 person event, Dromai, if you're good on Dromai, you can still cut across. And uh, unfortunately, in this matchup, I believe Viserai just uh, hit the nuts. From what I could tell, hit the nuts. I don't think, um, I, I think I saw a post about this, and uh, I do think that it was from the Dromai's perspective, but I could be misremembering. Nevertheless, sounded like uh, the Viserai player just found what they needed to to pick up the win. Dash here as well. Oldham, Briar, Icelander, Briar, and Oldham. A lot of these words that I keep saying, I've repeated multiple times. Oldham. Briar, Icelander, they keep showing up because they keep picking up wins. In Ireland, a 19 person, very small event. Nevertheless, we did have a Viserai, a Briar, a Briar, two Oldhams. <laughs> Another Dromai pops up, which I think is really fun. I think Dromai did take a step forward this week, and uh, we'll talk about something else. A result here coming up soon, uh, why I think that is the case. Uh, as well. Viserai and Dash also. So a lot of the same names towards the top and really we're looking at the idea that Briar still exists and is still capable of picking up wins if you're playing and landing and finding Channel Mount Heroics because you can just push a ton of damage. Oldham is really consistent. Very, very consistent. And um, I don't want to say so consistent that you can kind of follow every single play pattern and know what they're going for, but consistent to the point where you know that you can put up results with it. And then depending on how you tune Dash, you can uh, put up results as well. And Viserai can still high roll and uh, push a lot of damage. And uh, Icelander, and Icelander's not in this result, but Icelander can really do some stuff into specific matchups like can really be disrupted. Now we come to New Zealand Nationals, which was an 87 person classic constructed event. Some very, very great players. And Matt Rogers picks it up, closing out the trifecta for the Team Dragon Shield players in the national season. He becomes the 2022 national champion of New Zealand after being the 2020 national champion of New Zealand. Uh, wins against Icelander which is an interesting matchup. Uh, I actually did not watch this finals. I fell asleep after the quarterfinals um, watching Matt Rogers play in the quarterfinals. So I got to go back and watch this game and see how it played out. But nevertheless, Oldham is very popular and uh, puts up results. Briar as well, Briar as well, Briar as well. <laughs> Interestingly enough, this is like the only time we actually see Bravo Showstopper 
pop back up this week. I think we don't see it anymore after this. I could be wrong though if I misremember. Please excuse me. Nevertheless, Bravo really fell off as far as top eight results are concerned. I expected Bravo to be kind of up there with Oldham, but Oldham, it's clear, just kind of does it better with a few more tools at his disposal. In the Philippines, we had a 34 classic, a 34 person classic constructed event uh, with Oldham picking up the win. Viserai, Dromai, Icelander. This one was interesting to me because it was another Kano picking up the win. But again, you get these smaller events, and uh, if you can execute on Kano, I think you can kind of spike a few of them, which is pretty interesting. But we have uh, more Oldhams down the page as well. And Oldham just is still S tier level of power. Didn't win necessarily the uh, US National Championship, but that, that really doesn't speak to anything because it did win uh, the, well, let's see, it won the uh, some of the other major ones like New Zealand National Championship and Canadian National Championship. And um, I don't think it actually did. It, did it win the Australian national? Were they all playing Oldham? I'll have to relook at that. Poland, uh, an 85-person event, very large event, and Briar picks it up over Oldham. Look at the oh, look at this though. Briar Oldham, Briar Oldham. I remember actually looking at these results and going, "Wow!" Oh, I was wrong. Look, Bravo's right there. This was the fun one though. Azalea, Ace in the hole makes a top eight appearance. And that right there is crazy. Azalea cuts into the top eight and wow, I was I, I was actually following this and really hoping that Azalea pushed in the top four because that would be crazy. But how cool is that? Seeing Azalea actually kind of spike a little bit and uh, make it to the top eight, which I think is fun. Haven't said Fi's name in a while. Fi, I think, is still very, very, very good. So let's say Fi's name a few more times. Fi. Viserai, Viserai, Briar. This is a very, Slovakia, a very, um, a very aggressive meta. Dash, and then two Dromais at the bottom, which is super interesting. That was a 19-person event. Uh, and then Sweden, we had uh, Briar. There's another Bravo. I see. I was I was so off. Maybe I was thinking about last week. Uh, Briar, Reinar, which I was honestly surprised I have not said Reinar as much because I did actually expect more Reinar players to make it into more top eights, uh, and that wasn't the case this week. But I do still think that Reinar is one of those nice little dark horse decks that if you know how to play can actually get you there. Bravo Dash Dromai. Uh, it's it's a lot of the names that we've seen. Uh, a lot of the the heroes that we've seen across these boards are, are kind of topping. And that's a very interesting thing. But it's incredibly varied. We see a lot of the same names, but it's a lot of heroes. It's not like only Briars or only Oldhams or Briars and Oldhams. It is a lot of that, but it's also Viserai and Dromai and Dash. And in this case, I do say Bravo again, but Icelander has shown up a lot. Switzerland with a 44 person event is picked up by Icelander. So Icelander got like multiple wins. Taiwan actually, believe it or not, picked up by Lexi. That was one of the results that really shocked me as well, which is kind of crazy. And this one was a mixed format, classic constructed and uprising draft. Picked up by Lexi though is kind of crazy. And then look at this. I just, that's a lot of Briar. Oops, almost all Briar. Kind of crazy. And this was the uh, this was the one event as well that Sir Bolton, Breaker of Dawn, actually did top eight. So uh, Sir Bolton and uh, Azalea. Where's Azalea? I skimmed it. There it is. Azalea actually cutting into top eights. Apparently the only one that didn't, Katsu. The only hero that didn't is Katsu, which is crazy to me. Uh, overall, the uh, the wins for Thailand, I think Thailand was kind of a smaller event. Yeah, it was. It was a 30-person event. Uh, it was picked up by Phi over Oldham. And again, that's a matchup that I thought was very interesting. Phi into Oldham, because I feel like prior to last week, Phi into Oldham was viewed as like a very Oldham favorite in general. And uh, I think that's changing in a big, very big way, because if you are executing on Phi, you still just push way too much damage. Now we should talk about the U.S. Nationals. If you did not watch the coverage of the U.S. National Championships, go watch the coverage of the U.S. National Championships. I had the absolute honor and privilege 
of providing some of that coverage. I hope that people enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it. I uh, don't know the next time I will get to provide coverage. I would love to keep doing it and I hope you would enjoy it as well because for me, every time I go to one of these events and I, I get the opportunity to provide commentary for um, you know gameplay, I come away with it just feeling so fulfilled and hoping that people really enjoyed it because I thoroughly enjoyed doing it. And if you didn't watch it, spoiler alert, Michael Hamilton on one of the cooler Icelander decks out there picks up the win. And I'm not going to lie to you, I did not expect an Icelander to pick up the win in the U.S. National Championship. I expected Oldham or, uh, you know, maybe Fi, but really more Oldham or like a Briar scenario, but really Oldham. <laughs> I expected Oldham to pick up the win. And this this was just a crazy, crazy cool uh, deck. And he did it against an incredible opponent in Daniel Rutkowski, who just blazed through the, the field, absolutely crushed the field. But Michael Hamilton says, I'm really good. And uh, we're going to go toe to toe. And he came out on top. Now, I do want to point out um, Dash. This was a super turtle dash that could gain a bunch of life. And this was a very well executed Icelander that was uh, kind of just the purest form of Icelander out there right now. This Phi had a bit more flame recursion, which I thought was really cool. Um, Oldham, generally pretty straightforward, the two Oldham decks. One of them was running um, some like yellow earth lore surges, which I thought was kind of cool. And then uh, Brody on uh, Briar just executed, just executed to the T. Unfortunately, ran into some really rough hands in the quarterfinals uh, against w probably the best player in the tournament going through it with the, at least the best record. Uh, and it was just a tough matchup from the beginning. And because it's just a race, right? And you have uh, one shot to hit it and you just hit some uh, brick hands, but absolutely crushing it. Turning 17 on the day, he also got top eight. And uh, that's, that's a pretty good way to uh, wrap up a tournament. But I am literally going to be uh, talking through like th these decks and a few others that we're going to look at here in a moment on a Channel Fireball video coming up, kind of breaking down just what those lists are uh, kind of doing. So if you want to see that, check that video out. And then I do want to cover this too, because uh, the calling kind of showed what I expected. Oldham is real good. Oldham's real good. But you know what? Reinar's still there, and Icelander can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Oldham as well. Isaac Krut almost able to pick up the win over Colin, but Colin does indeed close it out. Uh, Reinar, real cool. And then here's Dromai again. And this Dromai list is... Uh, I would say for the most part, pretty conventional, but there's a couple of tweaks to this list that I think are very fascinating. And I'll just talk about them right now. And I go into depth in, in the Channel Fireball video because I actually pulled this list. Three Tome of Fiendals, which I think is super fascinating. And then um, a, a lot of this is very similar to what you would see. Uh, Two Pursuit of Knowledge is also pretty interesting. Uh, but then just executing that deck from a, like a fatigue or control strategy and establishing dragons really really cool and again it brings me back to this idea that dromai is an interesting dark horse deck as well right now if players continue to iterate on it and think about what the deck wants to do and how it wants to either protect itself or attack the opponent and i think that's what's really the most uh you know just fascinating about about the hero right now and that really wraps up all of the national season we now have three weeks worth of these videos so if you want to watch all three videos back to back to back to see how uh, the meta has changed from week to week highly recommend doing that because it's actually super interesting to watch how this has sort of evolved from week to week watch them all back to back let me know what your takeaways overall are for this current meta i'll tell you my takeaway right now yes oldham is very good but this is not by any means or any stretch a one horse race and if you think it is well you have another thing coming because this meta is super wide open and it is shown throughout at all of these locations there are so many heroes that can be played and can be top aided with that making a tier list is honestly just kind of madness. So if you want to see my tier list, <laughs> wait till Friday. I was supposed to put it out last week, but I ran out of time because I had to pack. So I'm going to try to make that tier list this Friday. And it's going to be really fun because everybody's going to be A tier. And then we're just going to walk away. 
that's it. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to make that number go slightly higher. And as always, thanks for watching.